Hello everyone! In this video we're going to make a quilted Christmas bauble. It looks complicated. It isn't, not really. It will take a long time. It's constructed from very small triangles, which we already did in the pyramid pod. So I'm going to start this video by showing the circular thigh line join again and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this part of the video and I'm going to make a separate video for it and in future videos I'm not going to keep um, making the videos excessively long by showing this join unless you know, that's what you want me to do. But I will make a separate video so you can look it up. So it's basically a square knot. And you don't want to pull this knot in too tight. And then we're going to melt the end of the thread, but don't put the thread in the flame. Just bring it towards the flame. And you're looking for that tiny little blob at the end. And now you pull that. You can see I'm using my left hand until the blob is trapped in the knot. And then we slide that blob down to the end of our beads. For those of you that did the pyramid pod and already have seen how to make these little quilted triangles, do feel free to whiz on um, so that you just see the pattern but you will need to make 60 triangles. That's six zero. And it's a lot. But they do make, I think they would make a really pretty gift for someone special to put on the Christmas tree. And it will be very unique as well. So we're just starting out the same way we do flat triangles. First two rows are exactly the same. And we increase two beads at each corner. And then we're going to step up as we add the last two beads. Now this is, the next two rows are how we create little dimple. So we pick up two and we decrease by passing through the first bead of the next increase. I'll show you that again. And don't drop your beads. It's not useful. <coughs> Let's try that one again. There we go. And on the last corner, we'll pick up two and we will decrease. And then we will step up. So the next row is where the dimple really happens. So we increase two at the corner 
and then we're going to pick up one and go through the next increase. Going to pick two up for the corner. Go through the next increase. I can see I'm manipulating it so that we don't have any spare thread on the sides and this is what it creates the little dimple. And on the last row, uh, side we're just going to step up. So that's the dimple created and from here on in it is just um, worked exactly the same as you would any other peyote triangle. So this side is uh, peyote 2, increase 2 at the corner. and step up at the end of the row. This is quite a big project. And as I said in the beginning, it's, it's you know, something to be beaded that is very special. And you can create your own patterns, use your own colors. We have a family Christmas tree. Oops. And for all the um, designs that I do at Christmas, they just keep getting added to the family Christmas tree. And I think it's a quite a nice tradition. And they make great keepsakes. So that was three each side and two each corner. This row will be to increase to each corner and pay out to four each side. So this is the last side and we need to step up. And this one is obviously peyote five each side.
when you're working a project like this, if you work um, without the fire line join, you can use a lot of thread. And I would recommend Fireline for this particular project if you're trying to create a bauble without stuffing it, which is what I've done. So I'm just going to show you how I do the straight fire line join again it's just a square knot left over right and under right over left and under don't pull the knot too tight now we're going to make two little blobs again don't put the thread in the flame just bring it to the flame And then we're going to pull it tight. Do be careful that you don't cut your fingers with the fire line. I've done that before. So we're going to step up at the end of this row. And the last row is increase two and POT six each side. There were some issues with uh, further on, you'll see that I do say that you couldn't stuff the ball ball and I'd probably use bubble wrap to do that because it's light. I'm 95% happy with the strength and integrity of the bauble when it's done but I did have to um, use some stiffening on some sections and at the end of the video, I'll show you how to do that. Because I'm a bit, I, I really do like any open work that I can achieve on a Christmas bauble because then you can see the lights through it. Get more twinkles. And I'm all for twinkles. Crystals. <laughs> I don't know a beader that doesn't like crystals, so if you're one of those, do let me know. So this is the last step up and then we get into the fun because as you've guessed it I've already done the other 59 triangles <laughs> that's what's taken me so long to get this video uploaded it's a two finished triangle and this is what we're going to make. We're going to make two of these. This is half of the bauble. So I'm going to show you how to make one half 
and to start with we need to make pentagons. So we're going to stitch five triangles together. We also need three pentagons that have no threads and we need three pentagons that have a thread on the outside. So I'm missing one with a thread on the outside. So I have three triangles where I've ended the threads. And I added the red bead in and I do this because I'm a bit of a fuss budget and I don't like to see the thread loop. So that lets me come down this side to end the thread. So we need three of those. This one is just the basic triangle and I've left um, a tail that I can attach more thread to. So now we're going to do the joining row. So the name of the game is to get a red bead between the increase beads all around the bauble and I'll show you how to do it for in different positions. But this one is quite straightforward. So your joining row is Seven, peyote seven along this side and again if you've watched the pyramid pod you know I like to do a loop at each end of this row and this loop is even more important when you're creating a sphere So that's that bit done. Now I'm going to show you how to do the loop. And I'm going to use the tail end. So I want the tail to be pointing this way. Not this way because that will be the centre of the pentagon. You want it to be on the outside edge. Like this. And then we're going to make a loop between the adjacent increase beads. then it is important. I've seen um, some makes that people have, beaters have written in and said it's not working, my bauble's not working, it's soggy. Um, not, not this particular one but other designs and I can see they've not done the loops. It, you're, you're asking all of these tiny beads and tiny triangles to behave as one unit and that's why the loop is really important so don't miss it out. It can seem like a load of faff but if you're wanting to create a structure like this then you have to take a bit more time I'm afraid. So again, we're just uh, zipping up these two triangles. And when we get to the end, we will create another loop. So if you've ever bought one of my tutorials, my geometric tutorials uh, for one of my shops, you'll know that I refer to this as an LZL. So so it's loop, zip, loop. If you work the loops 
in the correct directions, pay attention to the way I've done it, then you'll find that you're set up for the next red bead between the increase beads. And you're also then set up for the next joining row. So we're going to complete all of the L the L's around this pentagon now. I'll just arrange them so that you can see what I'm doing. So you're going to do the joining row, then zip it up, joining row, zip it up, joining row, zip, joining row, zip. So in this way your thread will wind up at the centre of the pentagon and that's why you need a thread on the outside. So we're going to do the joining row all the way around this pentagon. So pick up one. Pass down through the adjacent increase, then come up through the adjacent bead, the adjacent increase on this side, and pick up one red one. And peyote seven down this side. You'll notice also that the thread that wound up in the middle of the pentagon has been finished off, so it's not there anymore. So I'll just show you the beads between the increase beads again and then leave you to complete this pentagon or this joining row. Don't do it on any others, just this one. And um, we'll see a map in a minute. Uh, for the more experienced of you, you'll get immediately what you're supposed to do. And then I'll talk through a little bit afterwards for those that don't understand how to do it. You need to com complete the joining row all the way around this edge. So in this map the blue arrows indicate where you only have to do an LZL. The red arrows indicate where you need to do the joining row and the green arrows indicate where you do the LZL again. In this way you should be able to stitch all six pentagons together to create one half of the shell. You can pause the video here if that's helpful. So I'm going to join the first join, remember the centre pentagon has the joining run row completed all the way round. So we're just going to do the loop zip loop to join this pentagon. As you join these pentagons together, if you lose your way or you forget which is the centre pentagon, remember the centre pentagon has all of the sides with a joining row. That means it will have seven beads on each side, whereas the pentagon that you are joining to the centre one will only have six beads each side. 
And so we're just going to zip up those two edges. I tried working the other way around. It just really wasn't working for me. <laughs> So I went back to the way I was working before. So when we get to the end of the join, we're just going to create another loop. And we're going to fill in the red beads that are missing from the increase beads. So you can see me counting to check which one is the center bead. Now we're going to fill in the red beads and create the joining row for the next pentagon. And then I'm going to leave you on your own to do all of that. And you can refer back to the map if you get lost. So again, the this side is this side that we're doing the joining row on. And then we're going to join in the next pentagon. And so here we are. I joined on the next pentagon. The center pentagon is under my left thumb. And now you can see I just need to loop zip loop this together and then do the joining row again. Then add in the remaining three pentagons in the same way. So here we are and I've joined in the six pentagons and I have also done the joining row all the way around this edge and I filled in all the missing red beads. And I've ended the last thread on this half. On this half, obviously we don't need a joining row and there are still missing red beads. But we can fill those in as we join the two halves together. But before we do that, we need to add a hanging loop. Obviously you can do this loop in any way you like. I've just used a, I think it's a six mil rondelle and a large bead, just to trap the bauble between those two beads. And I'm going to create a larger loop. It's just easier 
to get it hanging nice on the Christmas tree. Oh, although you can make a small one and create a hook if you like. And this, I find when you do these loops that it wobbles a bit. You can't get it very, very tight. But I'm not too concerned because I know I'm going to put a little bit of a ribbon in there for the bow. So that's that done and it's nice and secure. And now we join the two halves together. You need to be careful that you don't squash it. Um, because this creates wear and tear. I think it's quite easy to see that the points fit in. It's a bit like um, an eggshell. The more sides that you join, the stronger the ball becomes. Now I had hoped that it wouldn't require any stuffing and I don't think it really does. But I did have to uh, use some stiffener on some of the joins which were indented. And I'll show you that in a little while. So you just need to go around filling in and zipping up. You need to get these red beads in. You will find that you don't have to go backwards and forwards. It just, it will just go all the way around. I'm just going to stitch a few and I'll come back when I've done. So at this point I've got approximately half of the shell joined. And if you're wanting to stuff it, um, then by all means do. So here I am, I finished, it's joined, it's sturdy and I'm quite pleased with it, but there are a few. You can see under my right thumb that I have an indented diamond. So what I'm going to do is very, very carefully I'm going to use my reamer, but you could use a thin knitting needle just to raise that up till it's a smooth. And then I'm going to use a clear nail varnish. I use this one from Ribble. It, I don't find that it yellows. And then I just paint it and wait for it to dry and then I'll look at the rest of the bauble and see what others I need to do. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and enjoyed making a geometric sphere with me. Do feel free to comment and I'll be back with a new design soon. Take care everyone. Bye for now.